welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. This is a podcast about knitting and crocheting and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl. I have also I also have a website newleafdesigns.nl and I will list all of the other things right here for you. Today is a very, very grey day um, and the lighting was terrible <laughs> but I'm really happy because I was able to fix the lighting with just a simple, uh, just a simple trick. I'm gonna show you because this trick is, well, I hope you don't mind me saying this but it's genius and I really want to share it with others. Um, I have this tissue paper, just white tissue paper that was used to wrap something I ordered and I've been using it to kind of uh, diffuse, diffuse lighting. So I've been sticking it on my window if I wanted to take a picture for Instagram and I didn't want to have those harsh shadow lines and what I've done, so let me show you, I've gone and you can't actually, oh there, there it is, it focuses. So I've stuck it on the window and yeah, I hoped it would just fix some of the harsh shadows um, that were happening, but uh, it also kind of made it really bright. So yay! Really happy for that because it looks like the colors are way more accurate than normal, which is good. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited to get started. I have a lot to talk about today, but the first thing, the first thing I want to talk about with you guys is the striped and stranded knit along that I've been hosting in my Ravelry group. Uh, Striped and Stranded is a sock pattern that I published earlier this month and um, I've been hosting a knit along because it just seemed fun to knit it together. You can find all of the details for the knit along in my group on Ravelry which is called the New Leaf Podcast group. Uh, I've opened a uh, finished objects thread and also a chatter thread where most of the talk is happening, obviously. Uh, and a lot of people are sharing their progress, sharing advice with each other, and I'm just so enjoying it. Just, just reading through all the comments, seeing all of your lovely projects, and it's really, really amazing. And um, I just couldn't be more excited about my first cow. And um, you can also share your pictures on Instagram with the hashtag striped and stranded cow. Of course, you can also tag them striped and stranded socks. Um, you can just use the two of them because after the cow ends, of course, you can uh, keep tagging your uh, striped and stranded socks with that hashtag. So, um, I have also cast on a new version of the Striped Unstranded Socks. I'm not sure if I had already started it. I don't think I had started it last time, so that was two weeks ago. And this is what I have knit so far. Um, my first version was uh, one made with Fab Funky Fibers yarn um, as the self-striping main color and it had really broad stripes and this one has really, um, really small stripes or I don't know how to say it, really narrow. Uh, so what I've done is just I don't pay attention to the stripes as much and I just keep on knitting the color work. I'll get it out of my Deepian Cozy, or Needle Cozy, I suppose, which is by Craftfulness. Um, Craftfulness is also a yarn brand by my friend Sandra. Um, she's Sandra's Craftfulness on Instagram, and I'll be sharing some of her yarn later in this episode. Um, 
So my second version of the Stripe and Stratted socks, I've been using my Kitty uh, Progress Keeper from uh, Copo UK on Etsy. Um, and I've just been placing it uh, every day to motivate me, but these socks don't need that much motivation because they're so fun. Um, I'm using several colors of West Yorkshire spinners. This is one of their uh, lovely lavender shades. And then I'm using the Passion Fruit Cooler colorway oops, uh, for the stripes. And I'm using a purple uh, contrasting color. This is actually not sock yarn. This is a mix of 50% uh, wool, 50% acrylic. And I bought it in China three years ago, I think, in some yarn store in Chongqing. That is actually a name of a town, Chongqing. It sounds like someone just is impersonating a Chinese person, but <laughs> it is really uh, a city name. So I, I just bought it there. It's, it's brandless and um, yeah, but it's fun colors. And as I'm just using it as a contrast and not for the toes, heels or cuffs, I think I can use acrylic content yarn and socks. So I don't think that's a problem. I actually think acrylic is very strong, but I'm not sure in what way acrylic yarn different from nylon. So, so I won't use it for the heels. Um, yeah, I'm right about the point where I want to start the heel. So I'm gonna do that afterwards, but I'm just really enjoying this purple palette it's just speaking to me on so many different levels and yeah it's the the shorter stripes are pushing me to be more creative with the color work and also because in the yellow stripe the color work doesn't really show you know you'd think that purple and yellow would be different enough but um, it seems like they have the same kind of saturation level of color and that's why it's not really showing up um, as much as I would like. So um, some advice if you're still looking for uh, your combination for the striped and stranded socks. Um, for color work, they always suggest that you take a black and white photograph of your colors or take a photograph and then use some app to convert it to black and white. And um, that will save you <laughs> uh, some of these mistakes. So um, I probably should have gone for white to be perfectly safe, but um, I actually quite like it that you sometimes see the contrast really well or see the color work really well and sometimes it's kind of vague. I, you know, gives, an, gives another dimension to the knitting. So I'm really enjoying working on that and I'm also enjoying uh, seeing all of your pairs on Instagram and on Ravelry. Some of, uh, some of you have already finished, that's awesome. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just wanted to start off with that. Usually I start with finished objects, which I do have. So let me uh, get them to show you right now. So I have two finished objects for, to show you this episode. And one, you'll probably have guessed already because it was, I was done knitting on it in the last episode, but it wasn't really finished, finished. And now it is. So let me show you my finished Piccadilly shawl. And I am so in love with this shawl and it's so huge and the border is just amazing. 
I love I love the border even though that was my least favorite part in knitting but yeah I just it's just such a pretty shawl and it's it's amazing how well it goes with so many of my uh, outfits and I also love that um, at each little loop there is you know I didn't make an eyelid but because the stitch underneath it is so stretched out uh, it kind of works as an eyelid as you see um, see the light coming through it so yeah uh, and the shawl bump which I was complaining about last time uh, I've been able to get rid of it almost completely uh, during blocking, so I'm really happy about that. It's, um, yeah, almost completely flat. And when you're wearing it, you really don't notice it. Even, yeah, you can see it's not completely straight, but um, it's straight enough for me. Yeah. And the other thing I was worrying about, which is this little um, dip, uh, well, this little corner here. Um, during blocking, it seemed to be um, totally straight, but then afterwards, it kind of, you know, fell back into its previous shape, and it's kind of like this. But, um, I have to say that I haven't noticed it anymore since I've blocked it. So I've just been wearing it and I haven't paid attention to it anymore. So yeah, I'm really happy with this shawl. And let me put it on for you. Because I did have some difficulties in styling it since um, big shawls are quite difficult to style in my opinion but um, yeah usually I end up with one point being really long but then I just tuck it underneath the shawl so that I kind of have two edges like you see the to border? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this, but um, yeah, if one point is too long, I just tuck it back under the shawl and it's fine. Um, yeah, really happy with it. And it's really warm too because it's 100% merino. And uh, me and my family, we were going out walking on uh, during this weekend where it was like crazy uh, warm weather and, and the week afterwards it snowed again but uh, so that day it was really warm outside and I wore this shawl because you know I was seeing my mom and uh, my mom is a knitter as well and I know she would appreciate it and it was my first time to wear the shawl outside so I was determined to wear the shawl but then <laughs> Uh, halfway through our trip, through our um, through our walk, it became so warm that I was just, you know, I had my coat open and I just had my shawl uh, just draped once, like a scarf, and it was so warm. But you know, sometimes a knitter has to persist to <laughs> wear knitwear. Ideally, it could have been a tad smaller because the way I like to wear shawls is just drape them around my neck or around my shoulders and just have it like this. But then the points just trail to my knees, uh, which is not ideal. So I have to like pull it with the center towards here and then wrap it at least around one shoulder um but 
it's fine I guess I mean I have never had a shawl this big before so it's natural that I cannot wear it as I'm used to so yeah all in all I'm really happy with this shawl and even though it took me like one and a half years to knit I still think it was really worth it so as a small recap this pattern is the Piccadilly shawl by Elite's Knits uh, on Instagram, which is Justina Erlokrovska. <laughs> and I still haven't looked up how to pronounce her name and I'm terribly sorry. Um, the lighter shade of purple or the pink yarn is Madeleine Tosh. I've used two skeins in the, I don't know, Tosh Light. It's, it's a... Um, it's a single ply yarn. The dark purple is a normal sock yarn uh, from Het Wolbase, which is a Dutch indie dyer living quite close to me. And it's just a really nice dark purple with some coffee brown in there. And yeah. Uh, at the start, I didn't really know if this. Um, color combination would work for me but um, I'm really happy with it and it turns out to pair really well with most of my outfits so that's great. So on to my next finished object which is also a shawl and I had started it um, last time I recorded but it's just it has progressed so fast and of course this has just been a one skein project so i've used just one third of the yarn that i used for the piccadilly shawl and just one fourth of the yarn that i have used for my west knits uh speckland pop shawl um but even taking that into consideration i think it, this was a very quick knit and I'm not even sure how I managed it, but <laughs> here it is. It's my Spindrift shawl or shawlette. Uh, Spindrift is a pattern by Helen Stewart from Curious Handmade. And the yarn is a BFL sock yarn. BFL stands for Blue Faced Lester, which is a sheep breed. Um, I'm saying this because when I first started watching podcasts, I had no clue what BFL stood for and I was like searching for it, but <laughs> I didn't really um, found what it meant until like a few days later. So blue face Lester and the, this was dyed by Twisted Finch, which is a indie dyer from the UK. And it's a beautiful honey, golden, mustard colorway, and it's just really, really pure and pretty. And it also matches really well with a lot of my outfits, so that's great. And um, I have modified the pattern a little bit. Uh, the Spindrift shawl is uh, basically a stockinette crescent shawlette with this um, lace detail and a pico border but then I've also added some some slip stitch detail Wait, let me see if I can show you up close So here's one section where I've used slip stitches and here I've used slip stitches and, and yarn overs and here it's basically the first section again but then um, but then just doubled and it's really really fun and I'm thinking of doing that same slip stitch pattern on a tri triangular shawl as well, just trying it out. 
yeah, and it's been really fun. Um, the only thing is that the top edge is really, really, um, um, it's not stretchy at all. Even though with each, at the beginning of each row, I have done a yarn over in between the edge stitches and then um, I knit a few more stitches and then I went back and dropped the yarn over to kind of pull the stitches so they have a little bit more length but still it's it's very I don't want to say stiff because it isn't stiff but it's just not stretchy at all and I'm not sure why because there are no slipped stitches on the edge which usually makes a really tight oh tight that's the word I was looking for so usually if you slip stitches at the beginning of a row it, it makes for a tighter edge but there are no slip stitches in this pattern so I'm just really stumped maybe it's because there are yarn overs after these edge stitches and of course the yarn overs are more uh, stretchy so maybe that's why because if you look up close I'm not sure if it will focus properly um, let's see if you look up close you see that the stitches are already stretched out to their maximum and so I'm I'm just not sure if it has to do with the edge itself or that it's um, that it has yarn overs right next to it um, and that the yarn overs are on each side so on the right side row and wrong side row um, yeah so I'm not sure about that but what it does do is because the edge is so tight that makes that the points are really curly you see that they just curl and personally I would rather that they just stay flat but it's not that I really mind either. It's just, I don't know, it's just interesting to me. Um, yeah, and next time I block a shawl, this is really fun to, to, to block, but um, I haven't steam blocked it and it seems that it has shrunk a little bit depth wise. So next time that I block shawl I'm gonna get my my iron out again and um, and also steam it a little bit and hopefully that will set uh, the shape a little bit better but yeah I just the stitch definition is really really beautiful in this yarn it's just really beautiful if I remember correctly, it's a high twist sock yarn and high twist yarns usually give that extra crisp uh, stitch definition. So yeah, it's really, really nice. And I'm really excited how this one turned out. My mom uh, also knitted one of these in her own hand dyed yarn. And um, she just hand dyed one skein at a, at a craft fair. It's not like, she she does it for her, her business which would be awesome <laughs> maybe i can convince her to do that um yeah but she doesn't know how to block it so i'll be helping her with that and um i'm gonna check my uh steam block theory if that works so so maybe my mom shawl will be bigger than mine so those were my finished objects my two shawls and now I'm going to show you my other work in progress. So my first was the uh, striped and stranded socks. 
and West Yorkshire spinners and now I will show you my Melly cardigan. So it's it's actually not much to look at. <laughs> um, this is the back and then this is the left front so I'll have to it's on a separate cable right now so I'm gonna continue on that after I finish the back and then <laughs> so the right front is already finished and it's curling up like mad yeah um I think I'll show you the pattern picture picture first because this doesn't look like anything yet um I've been dreaming of this cardigan for a long time here it is it has like bat wing um, sleeves and it's kind of cropped uh, but also oversized and oh, it's just stunning. So what I've done is I'm knitting the button band in a contrast color uh, because I don't think I have enough of the main color which is uh, yarn by Sandra's Craftfulness. So Craftfulness Yarns. And the colorway is all the mauves in the world. And it's just stunning. I love this yarn. Not only because it is so soft and really nice to knit with, but uh, the yarn is just, you know, it's not just pink. It has depth. It has like rusty browns, which give this kind of more mature look. But also, um, it's not, well, there are some gray specks too, but also sometimes you have this bright purple, like right here. And I just love the variety in this yarn. This actually is the wrong side of the net. Um, because the surface or the the right side is reverse stockinette, but on the wrong side you can see the color better. So you have these rusty shades, but also really pretty pink and purple shades. Yeah, I really love that. So um, because I feared that I won't have enough of the main color um, because it uses four skeins of DK weight yarn in the smallest size. I'm knitting the smallest size, although I am not the smallest size, but because it seems very oversized and the pattern pages that I have looked at or the project pages all state that there are the, um, the cardigan is a little bit more oversized than they would than they would like so but even then so it uses four skeins and uh, because in the project pages of uh, some knitters I read that um, the shoulders kept falling off or the the garment kept falling off of their shoulders and I really don't like it when that happens. So I was aiming to do less decreases so that it would come up um, more towards the neck. And of course you need more yarn to do that. Um, and because this is top down, no, uh, because it's bottom up, there's not a lot of room for um, uh, altering it if you do uh, seem to run out of yarn. So 
Um, because of that, I just thought to use a different yarn for the button band and the cuff, um, and then it would be relatively safe, I thought. So, so after figuring that out, I had to pick a yarn for the button band, which was not very easy because I don't have any DK yarn in my stash. So I used two yarns held together. Um, there's an olive tone in here, uh, held together with a more uh, bright turquoise. So the olive yarn is Scapius R Tribe yarn. Um, uh, a solid colorway in olive olive wreath colorway um, and the uh, turquoise yarn is Scapius alpaca rhythm which is a really fine yarn it's like a lace weight um, with uh, some alpaca content and those two together um, made a DK weight yarn so um, yeah, so I'm using that for the button band and the ribbing. Um, but I had to make some more modifications because the button band is actually knit uh, as you go. So it's, it's knit in the same rows as the rest of the body. Um, but because I already have two skeins attached, um, to alternate because one skein has much more brown in it than the other. Um, so I'm alternating skeins. So I already have two skeins attached to my project and then for the button band I am using two yarns as well. So I would have four skeins attached to my project at the same time and I just don't think that would have been fun so I altered the pattern a little bit uh, I just I just took off the edge stitches so I uh, subtracted four stitches from every edge and I'm going to pick up stitches later for the button band and um, go from there so it wasn't that difficult, but um, I had to scribble notes all over my pattern to make sure I didn't forget. Um, yeah, so I'm working on the back now. And let me show you this lovely V stitch. Sorry for the needle clanking. I have my yarn bowl on my lap. I'm using this yarn bowl by Anna Maria Klostra Ceramics. And the B stitch in the pattern is this really lovely little detail. And it's really fun to knit. And it just breaks up the um, stockinette stitch, which, which is just really nice. I mean, I, I could have done this without a particular stitch and it still would have been a lot of fun to knit but um yeah it's just nice so every every possible moment that i've had to knit i've just been knitting on this it's been so fun um and i just i i didn't want to put it down it's been so fun um, so I expect this to be done really soon, which means I could enter it into the uh, Spring Knit Along by Pom Pom Quarterly. I think every every quarter they, they have a knit along running in their um, Ravelry group. So this one uh, runs until April 22nd, and since that's a whole month away, and I've only been knitting on this since two weeks I think I might be able to finish it before then which would be my fastest garment ever if I did succeed 
Um, yeah, but we'll see um, if I manage because the sleeves are also enormous for this project because they're really, really wide at the um, at the top. Um, yeah, but they're made separately, so um, that should be more enjoyable to knit than if you do a top-down sweater and you knit the sleeves directly from the body because that's just not that fun to knit or not that easy. But uh, yeah, I expect this to be a fairly quick knit as it's been so quick and so fun so far. Lastly, I also have a yarn acquisition to show you. Um, uh, just a few weeks ago, I actually got this yarn before I recorded my, la my last podcast, but um, yeah, just I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just start explaining because it doesn't make sense yet. But um, so a few weeks ago, this yarn store in Belgium, which is called Julia's Shop, I think Julia's Store. Uh, it's in Antwerpen. Um, they had this huge sale, and um, one of the yarns on sale was Debbie Bliss Fine Donegal Tweed. And I have been eyeing this yarn, I think, for years. I have been so in love with this yarn. I've just... I think it's the tweed because the tweed is just amazing and I love tweed but I could never justify buying it because it's well it was quite expensive um, for a mass-produced yarn um, but now it was on sale so yeah I I just I got four four balls of this it's 95% wool, 5% cashmere, and it's a fingering weight, I would say. Yeah, fingering weight. Um, and the project I had in mind was the No Frills Sweater by Petite Knit. Um, I think it's also called the Decadarer Sweater, but um, yeah. My Scandinavian is not so good, so <laughs> the no frill sweater. So I have four uh, balls of this, uh, and as some of you might know, oh, I'll just I'll just put a picture of the no frill sweater in here. So as some of you might know, because the no frill sweater is really popular at the moment. Uh, it is um, knit with a fingering yarn, fingering weight yarn, and a mohair yarn held together. So of course I had to get some mohair and uh, although I could have gone with a regular store-bought mohair, store-bought, I mean of course I would buy it, but um, a regular uh, commercially dyed yarn uh, but I thought it would be fun to experiment with a indie dyed yarn um, because the main color or the fingering weight yarn doesn't have that much color um, variation so I thought I could go with an indie dyed mohair to kind of mix it up a little. So I had an excuse to go and buy some yarn of an indie dyer that I have not tried before but I watch her podcast every week and that indie dyer is Stranded Dye Works. So most of you know Amy from the Stranded Podcast and I went and got myself some of her drift mohair um, in the meddlesome colorway and um, when when I when I got the idea 
um, I, I messaged Amy and said, mm, do you have any meddlesome mohair planned for next week? And um, she said, oh, I'll just put it on my list. So uh, I was really excited and I set my alarm for when, uh, when she had her shop update and I just ran and grabbed it. So, um, and luckily I succeeded, but um, yeah, cause sometimes I have bad luck and then the yarn I want is snacked before I can get it. But mohair yarn seems to not be as popular yet as fingering weight. Well, yeah. I think I think it's kind of logical because fingering weight has that you know it's just more acceptable or more accessible I mean yeah to knit with um yeah but anyway I love this colorway I, I was looking for a fairy um, because I tend to not wear kind of I see gray blue but I do tend to wear darker blues so I thought if I just get a dark blue mohair then I would be able to kind of mix it a little bit um, so what we have here is a really um, moody blue with some purple almost black even and also some green and also some undyed spots like here you can see some white um yeah i think this will make for a very interesting effect uh, i'm not sure if i should be alternating skeins i think i will because I've seen one example of a no frill sweater where the mohair just pooled like crazy and it just, well to me, it, you know, that's not a desirable effect so I think I will be alternating these yeah, so this will be my no frill sweater I probably will finish it when it's too warm to wear it, but I don't care because <laughs> um, I've been planning to knit it for a long time and if I don't start it now, I might not have it finished for next winter, so yeah, so I'm really looking forward to knitting that but of course I have to finish my Melly cardigan first before I can cast on a new garment that's been my new rule and it's been working out quite well. Um, or maybe I will permit myself to swatch while I'm finishing the Melly cardigan. That will be a nice little contrast. Um, yeah. Okay, I really must wrap up now because the light is going and I need to make dinner as well um but i quickly wanted to say that if you wanted to join the striped and stranded knit along please go check out all the details in my ravelry group which is the new leaf podcast group uh you'll be able to find all of the details there um and of course you can join in the chatter and uh, see what everybody else is getting up to i actually I wanted to leave with a recommendation, but I'm not sure if it's a recommendation if everybody already knows about it. So, uh, of course, everyone knows about Harry Potter, but <laughs> recently I subscribed to this audiobook service. So, um, I know there's Audible out there, but it's not really... Uh, available in the Netherlands so um, I subscribe to this app called Storytel um, and they have all of the Harry Potter books on there um, and I'm listening to them uh, in English uh, narrated by Stephen Fry and it's just amazing and I've been I've been actually listening to the audiobook um, when I would usually watch podcasts um, yeah but I've also been listening to them in the car uh, 
uh, to my work is half an hour so I have half an hour in the morning half an hour coming back from work uh, and then usually I sneak in an hour before going to work um, since I'm the only one awake in the house <laughs> so uh, yeah I usually get through the books quite quickly even though they're like close to 30 hours um, you know uh, the the fifth and the sixth book uh, really long but uh, even though you know I can uh, go through them quite quickly and um, you know if you like podcasts then maybe also check out audiobooks because you might really like them I used to I used to really read a lot of books but ever since I started to knit and crochet I haven't had any more time for reading so I've been really into the audio audio books so yeah I just thought I'd leave that out there um, yeah because I've been really enjoying them for me for this episode thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't yet and i will be very happy to see you again next time have a very crafty couple of weeks Bye -bye.